guys, welcome back to another Jungle's Travels. So, where are we going today? Well, a mate of mine suggested I go and check out some uh, stone circles. Picked a nice day for it, haven't I? So, stone circles. Not quite sure that's what he had in mind, though. I think he was thinking more like, like this. Now this is a proper stone circle. This is Hadron Edge. And just across there is Lady Bower Reservoir. And this is the first stone circle I'm going to visit. I'm actually going to visit five, I think. Because it's within sort of like 10, 20 mile radius of here. About five stone circles, which is quite interesting. But look at the views here, man. Absolutely stunning. Why did they build it here? Why? No idea. Must have had some significance. So, what can I tell you about this stone circle? Well, it's called the. Um, well, it's called Hordbrunt Edge. It's also known as the Seven Stones of Holborn. Sounds like something out of Game of Thrones, doesn't it? And there's 11 stones visible, although they did find another three buried beneath the peak in 1992. And they reckon, if you look at all the gaps, they reckon there might have been as many as 26 here at one point, which is quite interesting. It does really seem like there's been gaps filled in, though. So, who knows? It's only a small stone circle. And right there, this to me seems like the centre. There's actually a stone here as well. It should be quite interesting if they dug this up. Yeah, there's a little depression here. Now that one there, that's called the Fairy Stone. And they reckon that one is a similar shape to the hill in the distance. And then that one's a similar shape to that hill in the distance. And they kind of space. So they reckon these are the two main stones. Who knows? I, mean, I suppose if you want to look at it that way, you could say the flat top of that one represents the flat top of the Standing Edge. You never know, do you? What the Bronze Age mind was thinking. Anyway, this is the first stone circle. Lady Bower Reservoir, as I say, is just across there. And we're going to move on to the next stone circle, because there is a hell of a lot of stone circles around here, which is quite interesting. Yeah. See you at the next one. Barbrook 1 because there's actually a Barbrook 2 and I think there's a Barbrook 3 as well I'm not sure but there's also a lot of cairns around now if you don't know what a cairn is a cairn is basically a stone marker which a lot of them use them as marker stones but they could also be burial stones there's about 80 of them on this moor somewhere but I'm going to find a few anyway so just made myself a coffee let's crack on So, 
is Bar Rock One. Let's go and have a check it out. So this is the centre of Bar Brook One. Bar Brook One. That's like the main store by the look of it. See the others are dotted around. So it's only a small stone circle. And apparently it's one of the best preserved stone circles in the uh, Peak District. But apparently the more impressive one is Barbrook 2. And actually if you look over there as well there's a stone cairn kind of thing there. So we'll go and check that out in a minute as well. So far I've got to say the one we've just been to is actually a bit more impressive for me. Although, the views are as equally as stunning. There's quite a lot to see around here. Hmm. I'll tell you what I can see. A dirty big grey cloud coming over. Looks like it's going to lash it down later. This is the uh, one of the cairns I was telling you about. It's kind of mad when you think. But I think this was sort of like Bronze Age, so that's like 2000 BC, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. Either way, it's like two, between two and three thousand years old, easy. It's crazy, isn't it, when you think our ancestors were up here three thousand years ago. It's probably changed very little when you look at it. Apart from the road cutting through, it's probably not much different. So I'm just on my way over to Barbrook 2. Look here, a cluster of stones there, and one there. Now, it is possible that these two are both cairns as well. You never know, it could be some ancient burial, some kind of marker for something. Interesting though, isn't it? Because not a lot of them will be prominent, but some of them will be quite hip. So you just kind of, kind of use your imagination a bit. But they do look like they've been bunched together. Anyway, let's crack on. And again, literally like 20 or 30 metres from them two across there. These are definitely on there, aren't they? I mean, look at all the stones here. I don't know if you can see that. The way it's raised up, it's just a bunch of stones. So they weren't lying, were they, when they said there's literally cairns dotted everywhere around here? I'm surprised nobody's been up here and excavated them, really, and seen what's underneath. Actually, right there. Another one. I can't help thinking when I see the stones like this. People have been digging them up, trying to find stuff. Looks like it, doesn't it? This is some kind of ancient burial. You see the way these are like bordered round, and it's just filled in with stones. You wonder, don't it? Whether well, somebody's been up here at night or late in the during the day trying to find stuff. Some Bronze Age burial site. Right, anyway, I'm detracting again. So we're going to uh, there, there, Barbrook 2, which apparently is quite impressive. It looks it anyway from Google Earth. I can't believe how many, it's just like cairns got it everywhere. See, there's another one there. It's almost like it was some kind of ancient graveyard, in a way. And actually, just across there, I don't know if you can just make it out. You can just see Barbrook 2.
So apparently during the 80s, I think it was, they actually, somebody tampered with this and kind of destroyed it a little bit. But the Peak Trust have actually kind of rebuilt it as it should be. That is actually quite impressive though. Basically a ring of stones. You've got a standing stone in the corner there. That's it. Not actually in the corner, is it? Because it's a circle, so there's no corners. So I've just been having a wander round, as you do, and I've found about 10 cairns with the uh, with help of Google Earth. So it's pretty cool. Some that weren't on Google Earth as well. Well, they are on Google Earth, but you can't see them. So now I'm going to head back to the van to get some dinner, find somewhere to park up for the evening, and then uh, tomorrow we'll go hunting for more stone circles. Right now, I'm going to leave you a shot of uh, the beautiful moorland. Actually, I found some wimberries as well, which is nice. Fresh wimberries. Not a vent for a while. Nice moon over there as well. Anyway, see you later. There's my view for this morning. As you can see, quite a few vans up there. So, there you go. That's where I ended up this morning. About last night, actually. Got here about half past nine last night. I was going to park up at Blue John Cavern at the top, but the road was shut due to filming, apparently. It was on very hot, I'm on a speedboat cover. But yeah, I'm trying to make a cup of coffee, chill out for half an hour, and then decide where to go next. A bit. Leave you with my stunning view. stone circle I'm going to visit in, which is Arbor Lou. Yeah, they tripped over a stone then as well. Teach me to not watch where I'm walking. So, this is the one, Arbor Lou. 6,000 year old ritual and funerary monument. Got to go through the farm to get to it. Uh, part of English heritage. So, got to walk through the farm to get to it. Apparently you have to pay a fee as well. Not sure how much, but I'll let you know when we get there. Right, let's go and check out our below. That wasn't bad actually, only a pound. Cow shed. Right. Not bad at all. There's a nice little uh, information plaque. Tells you all about the law and there's all your first farmers. Have a cheap insight. 
uh, excavation from 1901. Right, let's go and check it out. I've got to say, I've got to say actually, so far of all the ones I've been to, this one has been the most detailed, and I've not even got to it yet. But all the others have not had any information on. So these marker stones here have uh, VR and GR stamped on them for Queen Victoria and King George. This was apparently one of the first sites to be stored by, hey, one of the first sites to be um, recognised by a protection order. As you can see, all the stones have been toppled over. And they reckon that happened sometime around medieval times, when they were uh, scared of the sacred power of the stones. Due to the church's influence and the fact that this was a pagan site. But this is actually as old as stone engineering. Also. There's been activity here for about 6,000 years. This would have been the uh, centre where all the ceremonies took place, I'm guessing. Wow. And just across there, we're going to have a look in a minute, is Gim Hill, which is a burial mound. there is Gibb Hill, which as you can see is a burial mound. So we're going to head over there and check out Gibb Hill. So this is uh, Gibb Hill. We've got a standing stone here that's fallen over. I'm not sure why that's there actually. Got some more of these marker stones as well, which are obviously, like I said before, Queen Victoria, King George, and when it was first deemed a historical site. And it's basically, as you can see, a big stone burial mound. Wow. Nice big stone on top there. I always think when there's one here, there has to be more. It's like when you look around and you see like the dips in the trees and it's like a big mound over there. It always makes you wonder, doesn't it, if there's actually more burial mounds around here. Because when you look on the horizon you can see like a couple of mounds that look unnatural. Who was buried here? What was their significance? Exactly. I have no idea either. Yeah, as you can see the uh getting quite busy over at Arbor Law now. So I think it's time for us to move on to the next one. Let's crack on and uh, see what else we can find at the other stone circles. Hopefully a few less people. Well I wasn't actually going to stop until I got to the uh, stone circle but I'm just coming over some little windy lanes because there's been a bit of a diversion but on the bonus, llamas. How cool is that? Don't want to send the llamas if we hadn't took a diversion. Pretty cool. Yeah, beautiful, aren't you? Long way.
Hi guys, so we're at the uh, the next location, which I think is called Nine Ladies. A bit confusing because there's actually two with nine. The next one's called Nine Something as well. There's a van. You can see there's another camper there, and yeah, it's quite busy. Quite a lot of people here. But there, there's the uh, the main rock formation, and across there you've got some people as well. So let's go and check it all out and see what we can see. As you can see it looks uh, pretty impressive from down here. Quite big footprints, doesn't it? Like a giant's footprint. At the top up there you can see an S carved into the big stone sticking up. And over there, it's a couple of guys rock climbing. So it's like people have been graffitiing. Well, not graffiti, but carving. I wonder if TJ still loves AM. That was 20 years ago. Probably divorced now with somebody else. So yeah, there's literally carvings all over it, all sorts. Loads of them. I don't know why I expected. I wonder if S in 1885 started it all off. What a shot. This rock that I'm stood on is called Robin Hood's Stride. No idea why. And just across there, um, just to the left of the tractor, you'll see the uh, stone circle. Where the two guys on the uh, quad bike and the uh, scrambler are going. So let's uh, head over there. And apparently, there's a hermit's cave as well, so we'll see if we can find that as well. Cool. Yeah. Let's head over to uh, the Stone Circle. Right, so here we are. So, this is Nine Stones Close. And as you can see, there aren't Nine Stones, there's actually four. And apparently it was called Nine Stones, or a lot of them are called Nine Stones, because Nine is similar to Noon, which is around the time when the fairies used to appear in folklore. It dates back to the Bronze Age. Apparently there used to be a lot of burial mounds around here and some more stone circles but in the 1800s they um, dismantled them as you do because they're idiots. And if you actually look across there at the gatepost 
That apparently is one of the monument stones from one of the stone circles. Quite sad really, isn't it? So obviously there would have been more here. And they reckon, I think at one time it was like 36 square metres. Not sure. But it's also sometimes known as the Grey Ladies as well. Do fairies come here at night? Who knows? Come back tonight and find out if you want to know. But that's, yeah, nine, nine stones close. So, quite a few interesting things. You've got the nine stones. You've got Robin Hood's stride across there. There's some more rocks up there. You can see some rock climbers on them. Like I say, apparently there's a hermit's cave around here somewhere. I'm not actually sure where because it's not listed. So I think you just got to kind of rummage around and find it. If I can find it, I'll let you know. But yeah, there you go. The Grey Ladies. Right. Robin Hood strides across there. We just follow the path down. And then here we've got Crackcliff Rocks, which is an outcrop. There's a lot of people mountain climbing over there. Well, rock climbing. And apparently, this is where the Hermit's Cave is. In these rocks. So let's see if we can go and find it. Like it's only got a campfire here, but this isn't the Kermit's cave. <laughs> not Kermit's cave, it's the Hermit's cave. This is right, so we've got a cave there, but it's not the one we're looking for, not deep enough. Apparently, the Hermit's cave has got a cross in it carved on the walls and everything. A bit of history in there, so let's go and see if we can find it. Let's go swamping through the undergrowth. Little carving there, 1898. Stunning views. Some rock climbers over there. So you basically got to ramble all over the rocks to try and get somewhere. Which is actually quite fun really. Just scuttling all over the rocks. I'm quite enjoying this. Seems to be rock climbers everywhere. Look at them. Mental, absolutely mental. How can you gain pleasure from throwing yourself off the side of a cliff? Ooh. That's as close to the edge as I'm going. Terry Five Eyes. Let's see if we can find this cave. I wonder if Led's found it. There we go. Don't know what all this gear's here for. It's because there's a lot of rock climbers above me. But yeah. So there. Oops. Cross on the wall. Christ on the wall. I just think somebody actually used to live in here. I don't think these bars were here then. You never know, they might have been locked in. I doubt so though. It's quite interesting though, isn't it? So this is the Hermit's Cave. There you go. So I'm guessing that recess there, probably I would have had a candle in there or something. When he's doing prayer. Cool. Looks like there's some carvings at the top as well. No idea what they mean. I mean, they could have been done by Victorians before these bars were put on, couldn't they? Obviously, you've got some square carved out there. 
So you probably would have had a bed across there or something. So that was a rod all there. Yeah. So there you go. Hermit's cave. Job done. Now, we need to head back to the van. On to the next stone circle. I'll see you guys back at the van. Before I head back to the van, I've got to say, that is the biggest mushroom I've ever seen. Look at the size of that, man. It's huge. Look at that to my hand. Damn, that's a big ass mushroom. Alright, guys, I'm at stone circle number five. Well, I'm next to it. So, across there there's a big rock and then on the other side of that forest or in the middle of it is Dol Tor which isn't really on any maps it's not down marked anywhere and it's a bit hard to get to because it seems to be all private land which is a bit yeah so I think I might have to wander across a field aimlessly and see what I can find wish me luck not the easiest to get to because if you put in for the sat nav to go by road to it it's actually a private farm truck, so you can't go up it. So you've got to kind of be a bit in, ingenious, ingenuitive, intuitive. You know what I mean. Anyway, let's crack on and see if we can find it. Right, so this is the main stone in the centre. Doll tours across there. If you look, it's got climbing hooks to climb up. Do I chance it? Check out the date there, 1758. Awesome. If you can see that. Seventeen fifty-eight. The only way is up. Look at that view. And look at all the carvings in there. Unbelievable. Michelle, I love you. Valentine's Day 2002. Wow. What a beautiful spot. Right, so the tour should be across where you can see that trail there. Let's go and have a look. So, there you go guys. This is Doll Tour. It's a really tiny stone circle. Probably the smallest one we've seen yet. And I thought the last one was quite small. Dull tall stone circle. It is very tiny. Quite interesting though that you've got the standing stones and they're actually built with a stone wall around them. There's no gap. As you can see here, somebody's made a little reed kind of headband. And then across here, it's like there's offerings. I'm not sure what for. Maybe for good luck to the fairies. I'm not sure what fairies are going to do with money. Oh, I'll leave an offering. There's a penny. Why am I only leaving a penny? Because the fairies, they don't spend money in shops. And as far as I know, I did a druid. But they 
can utilize the copper to make copper bands. So just from reading the plaque, this was a Bronze Age stone circle and it was built around 3,000 years ago by local settlements in the area. In the 1930s it was fully excavated and they found artefacts there from ceremonies. And to the east of it, which should be here, is actually a cairn. Somewhere. Right over there. I'm not sure which way east it is. Anyway, so there's a cairn here as well. Now, I could be wrong here, right? But you've got a small stone circle here. But if you look around, you've got a bigger stone there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. Which to me suggests there's a small stone circle inside a bigger stone circle. If you see that one there, with a triangle bottom, that was probably stood up at one time. Just at a guess. I don't know, there's not actually a lot you can find about Doltor. It's not on any of the Google Maps. Um, it's literally just finding off what other people have wrote. It's quite hard to uh, find any information on it now. And also, if you look at that, you've got all these little markers here. Which could be Celtic or Druid rune symbols. They do look a bit man-made, don't they? Possibly runes. Who knows? As you've gathered by now, I am no expert on stone circles. I just find them quite interesting. Anyway, there you go. Doll tower. Number five on our six stone circles. So there's only one more to look at now which is Nine Ladies. Not to be confused with Nine Stones Close that we've been to earlier. Yeah. So there you go. Dull Tour. Beautiful. Right, back at the van. I don't know if you remember, but when I pulled up, there was a green van parked there. If you saw it, and there was an old hippie guy in it, a traveller. And he was telling me, up on this moor up here, opposite Doll Tower, up on the moor up here, there's about 130 burial mounds. It's apparently called the Moor of the Dead. Sounds macabre, doesn't it? Yeah. I did see some people up there before, so I don't know whether to take a wander over for five minutes. We've got time. The sun is not setting just yet. Let's go and have a wander. It might well be called the Moor of the Dead. There's a lot of living people up here. Busy than I thought it'd be. Looks like there's some kind of quarry there as well. A big stone there as well. Like a mighty Saracen stone. Ready for being transported to Stonehenge. In the back of a pickup truck. No. Let's have a look. What's over here? Ooh. There we go. The old quarry. There we go. Pretty cool. 
I've not seen any dead bodies yet though. Might be if he falls off that rock. You never know. Anyway, let's crack on. Tally here. There you go. Prairie dogs. Moreland puppies. So the old hippie dude did tell me that the cairns, a lot of them, are um, hidden with all the heather. And basically, look for a recess like this. So you've got all the stones, you can see all the stones dotted around. And you've got the recess where it's sunk. Ancient burial. Who knows what is under there, or who is under there, even. But also, you can see like the little mounds. And there's a stone across there. It's like some kind of height stone, so let's go and check that out. Tell you what else you'll find near Heather as well. Absolutely gorgeous. The right time of year to find them. Winburys. Mmm. Proper nice. Nice and sweet. Look at that. Just don't wear white and get it on your clothes because it won't come out. So apparently this is a ordnance survey marker. There you go. Um, and also, I've just been looking on Google. There you go, ordnance survey marker. And apparently the next stone circle, Nine Ladies, is only about half a mile in that direction. I'm going to walk it instead of driving. I've already done my 10,000 steps today. Oh, another 10,000 won't kill me, will it? Let's, uh, Take a wander over to uh, Nine Ladies, see what we can see. So, across here, where we see all the people, I'm guessing this is the Nine Ladies Stone Circle. Looks very busy. Let's see what it's like when we get over there. Yep, that'll be the one. With all the kids sat on top of it. Oh joy. says about it, because I don't actually know anything of it. Oh, there you go. So legend has it, nine ladies returned to stone for dancing on the Sabbath, and that the king's stone was the fiddle. In fact, the stone's part of an embanked stone circle built around 4,000 years ago, at a time when many stone circles were being built in Britain and Europe. Especially around here, there's quite a few of them. This stone here is called the King's Stone, and then it's about 40 metres away from the Nine Ladies. They're not actually sure what the King's Stone's purpose was. Um, archaeologists haven't been able to figure it out. As I said, there's actually a lot of monuments around here, a lot of burial mounds, called the Moor of the Dead. But, yeah, a very busy place, very popular. A few people scattered out over there. Well, that's it. The last stop on my little tour of stone circles for you. That's been my little uh, trek around the little stone circles for you guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you found it interesting. Drop a comment, let me know. Don't forget to leave a like, thumbs up, subscribe. Why not? It doesn't cost anything, it's free. And I will see you in my next travels. I'm going to head back to the van now and uh, 
relax and watch the sun go down. I assume I can get back in there. I assume I can actually find my way back as well, because I haven't got a clue where I am actually. Just walking through forests. But yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Stay safe out there. Adios.